Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa and I'm the owner of SeasonAndSurfBlog.com. So fall has arrived here on Vancouver Island and you can tell not only by the cooler weather but also by the variety of new produce that we have available in our grocery stores and farmers markets. I love this time of year because there's so many great vegetables and fruits that are in season like apples, pears, brussels sprouts, cabbage, and of course squash. So squash are very versatile and they do really well in fall recipes. They can be added into soups and stews, to side dishes, and of course into pies. Plus, they're very nutritious as they're high in vitamin A, K, and beta carotene. So since there are so many varieties of squash that are available this time of year, it can be a little bit overwhelming when buying them, especially if you haven't seen them before, or you haven't tasted them, or you haven't cooked them. So in today's video, I'm going to show you some of the more popular varieties of squash that are available, as well as some cool exotic ones that you guys should definitely try. Plus, I'll be showing you what to look for when you buy them, how to store them, and of course, how to cook them. But before we get into today's video, I have a question for you guys. I want to know what your favorite variety of squash is, as well as the recipe that you like to prepare it in. I'm really curious, I know there's lots of different squashes, so I'm expecting a bunch of different replies, so let me know in the comments below. So it's important to know that there are two different types of squash. There's summer squash and winter squash, and these are winter squashes, and this is exactly what we are seeing in our supermarkets right now. So as opposed to summer squashes like zucchini and patty pan squash, winter squashes are much sweeter, firmer, denser, and they have a thicker skin. And the thick skin is what allows them to be harvested in the fall and then kept inside and stored all winter long. So when buying squashes, make sure that the skin is tight and firm and that there's no major holes or scratches in the flesh. Also when buying squashes, make sure you pick them up and see if it feels heavy for its size. If it's really heavy, it means it's nice and juicy and fresh, but if it feels light, it's probably dried out and old. So it's kind of the same thing when you're buying watermelon in the summer. The heavier it is, the juicier and the riper it is. So when you bring your squashes home from the store, do not put them in the refrigerator. They can be kept just outside, but in a cool, dark place that is free of any moisture. Now, these squashes have really thick skins like I mentioned, and if they're kept cool and dry, they will last all winter long. Except for the delicata squash. That is an exception, but the rest of them, they do perfectly well, and you can enjoy these squashes throughout the winter. Okay, so now let's get into talking about the different types of squashes. And I'm gonna start off with the most popular one that I think many of you are familiar with, the butternut squash. So you guys will recognize the squash. It's actually available now year round, although fall is always the best time to buy them, especially locally. So this squash has a very light orange, smooth skin, and it has this beautiful bell shape to it. The inside flesh is really sweet and it has a nice bright orange color. This squash is relatively sweet in flavor, which is why I think a lot of people really enjoy this squash. Plus it has a nice creamy texture, so it goes really well in soups or purees, and it's even good baked. So butternut squash is definitely a favorite for sure. Another very popular variety of squash that we see during the fall months is the acorn squash. And you can tell why it's called an acorn squash. It looks like an acorn, but just green. Acorn squash comes in a variety of colors. So I have my green one here, and I also have a white one. These are super adorable as decorations, but you guys can also eat this as well. So when we're talking about the dark green acorn squash, it obviously has a dark green color and the skin is relatively smooth all the way around and it has these beautiful ridges to it. But inside, the flesh is a nice bright orange and compared to the butternut squash, it's less sweet. I think it almost tastes like buttery in flavor, but it doesn't have that much flavor to it. So relatively neutral and that's not a bad thing. I think the benefits of this squash is that it lends itself 
really well to picking up other flavors that you incorporate into the dish with it. Plus, its shape makes it perfect for putting little soups in it. I've seen this all over Pinterest. Obviously, I'm on there all the time. But I've seen people, they cut off the top of the squash, hollow out the inside, and sort of flatten the bottom. And they use it just as like a little soup serving bowl. Isn't that adorable? This squash is really great baked in soups, salads, basically you name it. You can put this squash in just about anything. Another popular variety of squash is the spaghetti squash, and this squash is all about the texture. So to cook the squash, there's basically a couple ways to do it. You can microwave it. I've seen that online, and I hear it's a fast cooking method. You just basically poke a bunch of holes in it with a fork and throw in the microwave until it's cooked, but it's a little scary for me. So my favorite way is to actually bake it. So to bake it, I just slice it in half and poke a couple holes in the top and bake it sort of like flat side down. And once it's cooked, you just flip it over and scoop out the inside and it looks like spaghetti. It's actually amazing. So this is definitely another favorite for sure. It is a great low carb sort of option to spaghetti if you're looking for a really similar texture. Uh, I've seen a lot of people put like pasta sauce on it or mix it into sauce and it is really good that way. It is relatively neutral in flavor. I would definitely say it is more neutral than the acorn squash, if you can believe it. But again, you know, that's not a bad thing. It is really great at picking up other flavors that you mix into it. Okay, you guys, my favorite. Can you be this excited about a squash? Not many people can, but I apparently can. But this is a kabocha squash. You can see that this squash is sort of like a flat pumpkin shape and it has a really nice dark skin that has some texture to it. On the inside of the sky, it has a very bright orange flesh, kind of like the butternut squash. And in terms of flavor, it is extremely sweet, even more sweet than the butternut squash. I think the thing that I like the most about this squash is the texture. It is a little bit on the more delicate side, so compared to the butternut squash, it sort of crumbles apart a little bit easier, and it's just amazing. It kind of reminds me of like a denser russet potato sort of texture. It is so good, and it tastes like starchy. So in terms of cooking the kabocha squash, you can, again, cook it in a variety of ways. You can bake it, you can put it into stews, which is, I think, my favorite way to do it, or in curries, that is also amazing. And it's just all around a really, really great squash. So definitely my favorite pick of the sponge. Next up, we have something that might look similar to the last squash that I showed you. This is an amber cup squash, or also known as a red kabocha squash. This squash is very similar to the kabocha squash. You can see in terms of its shape, it looks basically the same, sort of like a flattened pumpkin. And the skin is sort of rough and has these beautiful lines down through it. But instead of it being green, this guy is orange. Apart from its looks, it is also relatively similar to the kabocha squash in its texture. It's very dense, almost crumbles apart like a russet potato, and it is just fantastic. But the major difference that I notice, at least with this squash, is that it is much sweeter than the kabocha squash and a lot sweeter as well than the butternut squash. So I think of all the squashes that I have here, this one is the sweetest. In terms of cooking this guy, you can put it into soups and stews or you can bake it, but one of the most popular ways to prepare the squash is actually in pies. So you can use this in place of recipes that call for pumpkin or yam or sweet potato, and it'll substitute really well in those recipes. So now for some more exotic squashes that you might see in the store and you might look at and be like, what is that? I don't know how to prepare it. I am going to help you guys out. And we're going to start off with the delicata squash. So the delicata squash is also known as a sweet potato squash or as a bohemian squash. And I think it gets that from the beautiful yellow and green stripes that it has on it. This squash is absolutely beautiful. You can see the skin is pale yellow and it has these green stripes going all around it and it's a different shape it's relatively oblong but it is an absolutely delicious squash 
In terms of taste, it is really creamy and it tastes almost like a yam or a sweet potato. It has the same taste and texture, which is probably why it gets its name from that. Now, if you remember, I mentioned that there was a particular squash that doesn't really last the whole winter long and that has to be stored a little bit differently and this is the squash. So the Delicata squash has a much thinner skin than the other varieties of winter squash that I'm showing you and it's best stored in the fridge for a little bit. Um, if you're going to store it in a nice cool dark place away from moisture, it'll only last about a month. The thinner skin makes it a little bit more susceptible to rotting so if you're going to pick this one up, make sure you eat it within a month or so. So in terms of preparing the squash, there are a variety of ways to do it. My favorite ways are to roast it or you can also cut it in half and you can stuff it with a variety of different fillings. That is a really, really great way to prepare this one. Another fun exotic squash that you may have seen in the stores is this beautiful sweet dumpling squash. The sweet dumpling squash comes in a variety of colors it can go from green and yellow to this beautiful um, yellow and orange color and it looks a lot like the acorn squash but the end is more pinched and the ridges aren't as pronounced around it. So in terms of texture and taste, this guy tastes a lot and has the same texture as a sweet potato or a yam. It has a nice yellowy orange colored flesh and it sort of crumbles apart really well but it's still kind of creamy. So really interesting in terms of texture and in terms of flavor, it's relatively neutral I find, but it can be on the sweet side, especially if you get a nice ripe one. In terms of preparing the sweet dumpling squash, again, there are a bunch of ways to do it. You can add it into soups or stews or just roast it. And the roasting is actually my favorite way to prepare this little guy. Finally, we could not forget about the king of all squashes, the pumpkin. A lot of people just use pumpkins for ornamental purposes. You have these beautiful white Casper pumpkins. You have really nice Cinderella pumpkins here that I'm not going to pick up for you because it's like 20 pounds. And you have your traditional jack-o'-lanterns. But there are also pumpkins that are really great for consumption and this is the one. So this pumpkin is what your pumpkin pies come from and many people refer to it as a pie pumpkin but other people call it a sugar pumpkin as well because it is really really sweet. So in terms of its looks, this pumpkin pie pumpkin just looks like a mini jack-o'-lantern so it has a really nice orange color to it and it has a nice smooth skin all the way around. This flesh is really sweet and purees very well making it perfect for pumpkin pies. All right, you guys, that is it for today's video. I really hope that you learned a lot about the different varieties of squash that are available. And I also hope that I inspired you to use them in your fall recipes this season. So if you like what you saw here today, please hit the like button as well as the subscribe button and head over to my blog to follow me there. I am posting so many great fall recipes and home tips and entertaining tips, especially with Thanksgiving coming up. There's gonna be some really great little tidbits on my blog there. So definitely head over there and check it out. And that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.